$175,000 a year. Utilizing print on demand while working from home and earning $480 a day isn't bad. I'm Ashley and I've been a serial entrepreneur since starting a restaurant at 19, growing it three times, and then expanding into the apparel industry where I made over $175,000 my first year in business. I'm not going to prompt you to use some Skillshare link disguised as the go-to for learning new skills. When starting out, I realized that having to learn about products and selling in addition to website development too much at once, and for this reason and others I'll get into later, I chose to start on Etsy. Even though there are complaints about their fees, Etsy has enough going for it to make it a great first choice platform when getting started. The first point, and one of the most important, is product research. The customer will want to know, what's in it for me? People purchase things to improve their lives. You should ask yourself how much value the product provides to the customer and why they would want to buy it. When I was first getting started, I had zero tools. I wasn't aware of Everbee or Allura, and nothing was there telling me what keywords to use. I simply looked on Etsy for the best seller label and at the reviews, and more importantly, the dates of the reviews. I would spend my free time pouring over Etsy's website and app on the lookout for new designs or trends that were performing well. There were plenty of nights I spent death scrolling and kept a screenshot folder on my phone. One thing I learned was the value of not limiting myself to one niche while doing product research. Even when my store had a focused market, trends catch on at different rates depending on your niche. For instance, let's say your shop sells camping shirts, but a trend starts to catch in family vacation tees. If you only ever study existing bestsellers in camping, you'll miss out on the opportunity to be the first person to bring that style to the camping niche. In my own market, I recognized how the retro style was up and coming across brands like H&M and Target. TikTok had a lot of videos on what to buy next at Target or what to look out for in their new clothing section. By keeping a broader perspective, I was the first seller to bring the retro style that I saw elsewhere to a niche I was selling in. This cost one item to sell $75,000 alone in the first year. Now let's talk about why constantly adding listings is necessary for you to do well on Etsy. And it's probably not for the reasons you keep hearing. If your first several listings are great, they can reach thousands of dollars a month right out of the gate. On the other hand, quantity alone without quality won't guarantee sales. Etsy loves active shops when those shops have a track record of converting sales. Because it keeps shoppers engaged and keeps them coming back, they constantly want their platform to be in use. In the title, I said you can get going for free. If you're just starting out, search for 40 free Etsy listings and you'll discover a way to get 40 opportunities to make a sale before you pay for a listing. For my first shop, one of the ways I created new listings was to add variations on my best sellers. I added colors, pastel colored tees like mint and lilac did well along with natural colored blanks. My main buyer was women ages 18 to 35, so I paid attention to products marketed to women in that age group. Leading up to the holidays, I launched products to catch seasonal buying. For instance, before Christmas, I offered custom acrylic and glass ornaments and sold over $10,000 on a hard cost of $850. The more you interact with Etsy's platform looking for products, the more you'll be suggested. This is a great way to get ideas for a never-ending cycle of new items. In our Discord, we have a guy doing over six figures for Father's Day. It's not typically a lucrative holiday, but he saw an opportunity to add more listings to his customization business. As a rule of thumb for listing, here's an example of what months to start listing and advertising in for holidays with potential. Point three, everyone's favorite topic, pricing and shipping. This is the one thing I always get asked about. How do we know what to sell at? Should you go along with Etsy's free shipping options for the buyer? Do they matter? I see the anxiety over knowing what to price things at because it's crucial to strike the right balance between profit margins and offer competitive prices to your customers. It's like real estate. You don't want to be the most expensive house in the neighborhood, but you still want a nice house. The rule of thumb I always followed was a minimum of doubling your hard costs and adding a few dollars for labor. I have my Etsy tees listed at $24.99 with free shipping at a minimum, but I have an arsenal of good reviews that offer social proof along with quality customer service. If you're searching on Amazon, they could have the same item for $10 by one seller and $25 by another, the only difference being the reviews the more expensive one has over 1,000 reviews and the other has zero. Who would you go with? To build up your reviews will be a slow climb, but let's get into that point now to show you exactly how you can do this for lasting results. Point four, reviews and social media presence. Building your reputation online is work, but if you streamline that work, it becomes second nature. You should have a Pinterest and an Instagram account. All of your pictures should match between all of your social media accounts to build your brand's credibility. Your customers need to know what to look for at a glance because your listings are blended in with every other seller on the platform. Always ask for reviews and give your Instagram handle with every order. My brand blew up on Instagram
Instagram by becoming trendy from buyers taking aesthetically pleasing pictures and tagging me. I then used their photos on my Instagram feed, tagging them in return. This helped create social proof for my shop without me having to add additional work to my plate. They weren't just buying a shirt, they were buying credibility and reassurance of quality service for their purchase, along with having the payoff of being able to get their social media seen. When talking about the importance of visuals, I need to mention how important photos and videos are not only on your social media, but on the platform Etsy itself. People are already used to looking at and using their phones, so filming videos like you would for Instagram in short form version while being 15 seconds in length. Point five, SEO. Being intentional about titles and tags is vital for SEO, not only for tags you place in the maximum 13 tag location, but the title of your item. You're not writing a title to be aesthetically pleasing on your shop profile. People do not care what your shop looks like. They care about how the shirt will work into their lives. Can we add words into the title like birthday, kids, family, magical? Descriptor words are crucial in finding titles that will work for you. You don't need tools or a link or try to find an app that promises to do the work for you. Get on Etsy and look at titles. Invest time by immersing yourself on the site. Become familiar with best-selling titles and you'll become aware of why they're selling so well. This is how you become a top seller on the platform. Your new hobbies should include looking for best sellers and knowing trends before they happen. In 2023, having a free tool like ChatGPT at your fingertips for helping aid in SEO and taking some of the workload off your shoulders is something you should take advantage of. Point six, this is a topic that gives pricing a run for its money, advertising. I I want to be honest here, I had no idea what I was doing and spent $10,000 in three weeks on Facebook and Pinterest ads when trying to scale our Shopify site. I did about a month's worth of homework where I devoured everything I could get my hands on about advertising on Facebook and I barely made my money back. It takes babysitting, a lot of knowledge, and an expensive learning curve if you plan on using your hard earned money on advertising. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. Just make sure and keep in mind that it's real money you're using and it can and will disappear if you're not careful. That being said, free advertising is a great place to start out and does drive real traffic. Remember earlier I told you to get an Instagram and a Pinterest account. You will use these platforms to grow your traffic organically. You can share listings to Pinterest directly from your Etsy while looking into how to grow your brand on Instagram. There are thousands of videos here on YouTube about growing your Instagram. My advice is to not overdo it. Staying connected and growing by knowing your niche and commenting on other accounts for real engagement. Building a community is a great start. While growing your business, keep in mind everything you're doing on these platforms, Etsy, Pinterest, and Instagram, will all work together. As you grow one, you'll have a larger reach for the others. Our last point, number seven, is print-on-demand integration. I started out using Printful, and while I slowly learned about what I expected and wanted out of a production partner, they just didn't fit the bill. I had a lot of kickbacks, they always took a while to get back to me, and the quality of what I was expecting was never met. I was working hard to build my business, and I wanted a fulfillment company that matched my needs. I then moved to Prentify, which is a company that offers many different fulfillment companies to choose from with different prices and reviews for each. Prentify also allows you to integrate other websites. So once you grow your knowledge and business, you can then grow to a platform you have to drive your own traffic to, but can still use a fulfillment company that you find and like. Print on demand integration is typically pretty easy. You log into your shop through the website and allow access to the platform. If you want to dive into even more detail about earning money for your business, we have a library full of shorts and full-length videos giving our first-hand experience. And if you want to be even more involved, join our Discord. 